if someone wouldn't mind just continuing to admit people, that would be great. Thank you. All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Commander Jenin Kalawi, and I am the Plans and Policy um, Officer in the Core Chiefs Office. Um, we are at uh, our doing our monthly medical core symposium session. I'm basically on the operational medical officer and how to apply and answer questions. We have our operational specialty leaders on the line. We have our um, uh, others from the core chief's office. We have our detailers. Um, and so this is basically your time to ask all the questions you have regarding operational medical officer applications. We are going to do a, sh a brief uh, introduction and um, presentation from um, from the course use office as well as from the detailing shop. So uh, with that, uh, I will uh, go off camera and leave it to the uh, experts. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, before we start, um, just letting anyone know if you don't have microphone capabilities, please feel free to type your question in the chat and we will be monitoring the chat and answering those questions as well. Okay, thank you, Commander Inklawi. This good afternoon, everyone. My name is Captain Red Barrett. I am the Medical Corps Career Planner, and I am joining you from the Corps Chief's Office here at VU Med and Falls Church. Um, I'm happy to be here today with our detailer team, as well as our operational special leaders, to provide just a review of the OMO application process and highlight some of the OMO opportunities for this detailing cycle. Um, our many representatives from our office, the detailing shop, and each of the operational communities just got finished um, um, uh, doing our annual operational roadshow out of all the training commands where we have presented this information already to our interns. And our intent this afternoon is to reach out to our residency trained medical corps officers um, who are also eligible to apply for these OMO opportunities. Um, next slide. Uh, so uh, our goal today is to review the application guidance for OMO training, which can all be found in the VUMED 1520 42 Bravo instruction that's listed there. Um, um, after I review the application guidance, I'm going to hand things over to our detailing shop at PERS 4415, who will provide just a brief detailing overview and then also discuss OMO opportunities as well as the assignment process. Um, we'll have a very quick roundtable giving any of the operational specialty leaders an opportunity to chime in with any additional information, clarifying comments, if any. Um, and then we'll open it up to questions. Um, Kim, uh, Commander Inklawi, she's mentioned that she is recording this, and so our intent is to share these slides at our uh, on our uh, uh, Core Chief SharePoint page, and then we'll also send these out to um, send the recording out um, widely. Um, through social media and through our typical communication channels. Uh, next slide. So starting off, um, first off is really who should be applying for um, through the OMO application process. So the, the target audience here is ideally medical corps officers without prior operational experience who are looking for entry into an operational community. Um, so, of course, this includes all interns, um, particularly interns who don't have a continuous contract for residency. And as I mentioned, we've already we've already um, pushed this out to to the intern audience, but this would also apply to um, residency trained physicians who have completed enough of their utilization tour to achieve board certification and have met their time on station requirements to PCS. And, and and this is a an entry opportunity for those med corps officers as the career planner i am increasingly getting uh, more and more questions from officers who have limited or no operational experience but are interested in gaining some operational relevance or um, looking to increase their competitiveness for a promotion um, or just looking for a change of pace and um, they're they're asking me how to go about doing it and the easiest pathway is what we're presenting today it's this application process uh, that's your opportunity to express your intent in operational medicine, um, to screen for a community, to negotiate the billet, um, um, and communicate with your operational special leaders, your detailers, and your community special leaders on, on your desire. So next slide. So, so who should not apply through this process? This is really for uh, not for medical students. Um, that, that comes after this is all post-intern training. Um, um, applicants and then 
Med Corps officers who have already um, done an operational tour um, and they're desiring to go back to their operational community can um, use our, our typical processes that, that we always have with our detailers um, and our specialty leaders to, to negotiate those billets. So, um, for example, if you've already earned a ribbon or a war warfare device in a community and you want to go back to that same community, um, then, then you would not need to apply through this process. Um, to that end, the, ca the caveat here is would be if you were wanting to change um, operational communities. So, for example, let's say you have experience with fleet marine forces and you want to apply to undersea medicine or, or flight, th that would be great to, this would be the process to use to, to, to gain entry into those, to those communities. And then lastly, there's Med Corps officers in specialties that they already have billets in the communities that they desire. And so this is mainly with the, uh, with the Marine Corps where um, um, they already have specialty billets, for example, for anesthesia, general surgery, emergency medicine. And so if, if, you, if an operational community already has a billet that's labeled for your specialty, then, then you can just communicate with your community specialty leader. Um, you can learn more about it through the operational special leader as well, and then communicate with your detailer. So we would not need to, to use this process. Um, next slide. So the guidance is spelled out in ViewMed instruction 15, 20, 42 Bravo that's listed there. Um, admittedly, there are a number of links in that instruction that are, are corrupted. Um, the, we identified this last year after a system migration, uh, and we made every, we had the intent to update it with a change transmittal, but it was so extensive that we were going to have to do an entire revision of the instruction, which is a lengthy process. And then that was right in the face of um, anticipating the DOD 365 migration. So a, the workaround is that we have gone to the core chief's SharePoint site and put all the necessary links, points of contact information on that SharePoint site. Um, um, if you go to the link, we'll we'll put the maybe. Hey Jen, if you could put the link in the in the chat, that would be great, just so people can um, copy paste. But um, um, but if you go to our SharePoint site, on, we're going to have um, everything listed there from the instruction to points of contact to where to submit your application. Um, um, also, the the briefs that we're giving today, as well as um, um, the recent OMO opportunities list, all of that we've been pushing to the Court Chiefs um, SharePoint site for your for your reference down the road. Uh, next slide. So, um, so if you dig through the um, the instruction, essentially. Uh, this is a this is a good list of the the meat of the application that's necessary. Um, first of all, I'll point out that the application is a paper application. We uh, this is separate from mods. Mods um, the online application system for GME is a separate system. So this is a paper driven process. Um, and the the first two documents there, the NAV, Med 15, 20, 18, and 21, those are just standard forms, a recommendation form and a demographic form. Um, applicants need to submit a CV that's really in any format. There's no strict format to what the CV needs to look like. There's a requirement for a personal statement or letter of intent, just simply stating why you're interested in that particular community that you're applying to. Um, there's no restriction on applying to one community. You can apply to multiple communities, um, and so you just need uh, you need an explanation and an intent on on why you're applying to each community. Um, there's a call for a letter of recommendation from a prior GMO or an OMO for the desired community that you're applying to. Um, these letters of recommendation they can be brief, um, simply stating who the recommender is, that they know you, vouching that you would be a good match for the community. Um, it, can be, it can be short and simple um, when, when you go to solicit those, um, those requests for letters of recommendation, you can pass that information on. And then um, a command endorsement. So um, uh, we defer to the COs as about how they want to write their endorsements, but uh, we do want to push out and make everyone aware that that all of our um, 
operation, operational communities would be accepting of a CEO's endorsement of a member to multiple communities. So, so I think last year there was there is a like a requirement for um, a single command endorsement um, per member per operational community, and that's certainly not the case. Um, but but we, we we leave it to your CEO about what the, how they would like to handle the the endorsements. But you need a you do need a command endorsement. And then for the flight and UMO communities, they, they have physical exam forms and or waivers applicable. Uh, there's some nuances I'm leaving out here um, that you can read easily in the ViewMed instruction, like FMF requires uh, an ATLS card as part of your application package for, for their community um, and so forth. So, so, so that's, the, that's the meat of the content of what uh, would be in your screening package, your application package. Uh, but but again, I defer you to the instruction to 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 formulate the the correct checklist. If there is any clarifying questions, you can certainly reach out to our office or to any of the operational specialty leaders, and, and they'll certainly um, um, help you navigate the application process. Uh, next slide. Some important dates to highlight here are going to be. Um, these these uh, align with the, the with the GME application process. This is um, a separate process, but but keeping the dates aligned was important just to avoid confusion. So so applications for um, OMO would be due by October fifteenth, and that includes um, all the supporting documentation that's outlined in the ViewMed instruction and on the prior slide. Um, Results of the of the screening of the applications will be um, on or around 14 December. Um, these won't be listed in um, mods like the GME results will be. They'll be pushed out on paper um, to uh, to command leadership and widely out through the community. So you'll be able to see what those results are. And then um, if you know uh, selected to multiple communities or even one, you you need to give notification of your acceptance of that selection um, to um, your operational special leader and to your detailer uh, no later than January 6, 2023. Uh, next slide. And so on the Core Chiefs website, we've listed all of these points of contact. So uh, what's listed here are, are four operational community specialty leaders, um, um, their contact information, emails, and then also the email links that you would submit your paper application to for the um, for the OMO applications. Um, um, we uh, the the process of OMO assignments for residency training trained positions, it's it's going to be it's going to be an extensive cross detailing action from our detailers or and, and PERS. So Communicating your intent and your desire to apply widely is is as a must. Um, um, you, if you're a residency trained and applying to these positions, you need to communicate that to your community specialty leader. Um, reach out to your operational specialty leader for the the community you're interested in to let them know, and then communicate this with your detailer so everybody's tracking on your intent. Um, and. With that, I will um, turn it over to our detailers to give you an overview of the opportunities and the assignment process. And then we'll allow briefly the um, special leaders to kind of weigh in if they have any additional comments before we open it up to, to questions. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Captain Barrett. First of all, quick sound check. Can you hear me OK? Uh, yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Thanks. Perfect. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Captain Wayne Smith. I'm the Senior Medical Corps Detailer here at PERS in Millington, Tennessee. I'm just going to give a quick detailing overview, talk about the OMO process from the detailing perspective, uh, some GME uh, issues, and then uh, particularly uh, leave time for questions at the end. Slide, please. So, uh, it's important to realize, first of all, that the PERS uh, Navy Personnel Command here in Millington, it lies outside of ViewMed. Uh, we're a line command and uh, under the Bureau of Personnel, and uh, we, we we truly lie outside the, the Navy Medicine and all the other communities that that, that distribution is handled out, out here at PERS. So the Medical Corps detailing team uh, here on this slide, there's myself as the head detailer, but I also uh, own the Executive Medicine Surgical Specialties. Uh, Commander Gentry owns Family Medicine, PrevMed, 
the occupational sports medicine PM&R, but also anesthesia. Uh, Captain Leonard, who just joined us, has the, all the other non-surgical medical specialties. And then Lieutenant Commander Derek Chamberlain, which many of our OMOs will be dealing with, owns a GME, the OMO, GMO, flight, undersea medicine uh, billets. Uh, so that's the team here. And we're we're responsible for implementing uh, the, the, the billet file, which is the list of all the jobs in Navy medicine. And we take the available inventory and write orders to that. That's our role here in, in the process. Slide, please. So just to amplify that, we, we as detailers, we are ultimately the advocate for the officer in the assignment process. We, we talk with the members and then we look at all the various requirements we have across the enterprise. And in the end, we, we enter the orders on, that is going to assign that officer. We communicate with specialty leaders. We, we, we process INSEPS requests. We nominate officers for selection boards. We do command site visits and participate in forums like this to make sure we're educating people on the process. But in the end, uh, it's important important to realize we are designed, the system is designed for us to serve ultimately as the advocate for a member, both to serve their personal and professional goals and aspirations, but while while, while uh, combining that with, the, with the, uh, the needs of the Navy. Okay, slide please. So what are our priorities here? Obviously we have, especially right now, we have a billet file. We have a list of positions that we need to fill across the Navy. And, and then we have an inventory of, of personnel, highly trained people of various specialties and that never matches. So we always have some sort of discrepancies and, and so we have to prioritize. So clearly, as you probably can all guess, Operational billets, of which uh, a lot of the OMO uh, uh, positions are operational, are our highest priority. After that, OCONUS, so the uh, the overseas locations are the secondary priority, and then our shore-based CONUS, uh, specifically BSO-18 Navy Medicine facilities, are are the uh, are, are are the low priority. But it doesn't mean they aren't a priority. And I would mention the importance of our GME programs, something that I'm very cognizant of as we look at uh, assignments in, into our, our CONUS-based MTFs. There are a lot of other factors that are taken into account when we try to assign somebody, and, and, and here's a few here. Uh, exceptional family member program limitations, co-location, legal hold, limb due limitations, all these things have to be taken into account uh, in, in, in conjunction with the available billets to make the final assignment. So th these are the things that, you know, someone may ask, well, why, why was this person sent here and I wasn't? Uh, it, it's because there are other variables at play and that we here at PERS are the ones that have have to finally adjudicate those variables and, 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 and determine what the final assignment is for an officer. Sign, uh, slide, please. You know, it, it, so there are multiple critical people, a lot of important stakeholders in this process of assigning people into jobs. And I talked about the detailer. The specialty leaders are absolutely essential to the process. All right. And in this case, as we're talking about, we have community specialty leaders for each specialty, whether that's emergency medicine, family medicine, general surgery. And in the process for OMO, it, we have operational specialty leaders, FMF, surface, flight, and, and UMO. And, and the specialty leaders know their communities. And as the detailers, we depend on them to really talk to us about the communities and and where are the where are some of the assignment priorities and, and how to uh, how to match that 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 billet file with the inventory. Uh, so they're they're absolutely important. Uh, another aspect are the commands. The commands via the PERS placement officers oftentimes have input into the detailing process. But uh, uh, but again, the, the 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 main point to remember is that in the end, the detailer has to adjudicate all these stakeholders, all the variables to decide where that officer is going to be assigned. And, and so that's just an important important uh, note. So that's why it's important, as Captain Barrett said, that in this process, you're not only communicating to community uh, specialty leaders, operational specialty leaders, but finally to the detailer themselves, because in the end, we've got to make that decision. Slide, please. OK, so. Operational medical officer, what is it? Uh, Captain Barrett kind of alluded to it. The way we look at it practically from here from PERS is that as we, as Navy medicine goes through this process of really of straight through training uh, billets, 
specifically operational billets that were traditionally historically filled by non-residency trained physicians are going to be trained are going to be filled by residency trained physicians. That process is going to be deliberate. It's going to take some time, but we are in the process of transitioning to that and, and, and we at PERS have to adjust to that. So we, we we have come up with some processes to assist the specialty leaders and, and the core chief's office on how to get there. So that's what OMO, OMOs are from our perspective. They are residency trained physicians of various residencies that, that, that are filling positions that have historically been filled by non-specialty trained physicians across the operational communities. OK, so this is as Captain Barrett mentioned, this is a great opportunity, especially for those that may have trained straight through to 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 to, to get that early operational experience that is going to set you up well for future, not only operational, but command and, and executive medicine leadership opportunities. OK, um, a, a successful OMO tour will provide you further opportunities. Uh, slide please. So this is just, and this is straight from uh, Lieutenant Commander Chamberlain. He, this is what he is, this is what he is at this time looking as likely available locations in the various communities. Okay. Uh, now it's important to realize that that billet files and, and billet opportunities that it changes with time because as as people, uh, for instance, with GME is a big driver of this. The, the one of the reasons that we may not know what the final billet availability list looks like is because with GME, as people are accepted into GME, that unencumbers certain operational billets. So that's why the opportunities do change. But at this time, what he is looking at for likely opportunities, you know, you can see that for the Marine Corps. You know, you Marine Corps FMF billets, North Carolina, of course, California, Okinawa, Hawaii. We have various shipboard platforms across the across the area: Japan, Florida, Virginia, California, and then we actually have CB billets, construction battalion. Uh, we have GMO billets there, so Mississippi and, and in California. So these are all uh, opportunities that have been identified that, as likely opening up in 23 that Lieutenant Commander Chamberlain will be detailing into. Slide, please. Light surgery, uh, you know, Captain Rob Krause, he's the specialty leader for this community, uh, very aware of these locations, but you can see the broad geographical spread of these opportunities across the uh, across the globe, frankly. And uh, again, uh, very important uh, community, large community and uh, and all these opportunities are, are available. Slide please. And then under sea medicine, uh, Captain Musharoni, again, the specialty leader for UMO, the, uh, important, you can see just the broad uh, geographical spread uh, of opportunities here uh, for the, in the UMO community. Slide, please. So the timeline again, as Captain Barrett had mentioned, we 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 align the the process uh, to align with what the BUMED note states, so the GME process to keep so to prevent confusion. So this is the the window that we're looking at, and uh, the the the, de the hard detailing will will be made once all the final exceptions and declinations are made. There will be some detailing that does occur for second and higher order tours with people that are staying out with the fleet. They'll be detailed earlier, but for the most part, most of the detailing. Will not occur until after the GME uh, board is released and the acceptances are, are are finally tabulated. Slide, please. All right. So overall, uh, again, having been a former GMO myself, uh, and I can tell you, most people that have done it will tell you that this is an this is a fantastic opportunity to develop not only as a medical corps officer but as a naval officer as well. Uh, there's there's no there's no bad jobs, uh, you know, but, but but if you're interested, talk to the various specialty leaders, both your community specialty leader and your and your op and a cognizant operational specialty leader and your detailer. Get your application in. Uh, we uh, the specialties will review them. They will they will again their 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 interest is trying to find the best and most ca most capable and best qualified uh, officers to fill these positions in their community. They will work closely with the detailers. We'll be co uh, collaborating constantly toward the end of the year on this um, and, and to find the best. What what our goal is to find the the, the right person and the right job at the right time. That's what we work to do. Now, if you're not selected again, uh, it, you know, as we take these recommendations, there are other factors. If it, if you're not detailed into one of these into something that you've you've been interested in, uh, there are still other uh, there are still other opportunities. OK, so that's why in the end you have to come to your detailer to decide where in the end you're, you're going to go. Um, 
you, you, the graduating interns, you're, you're going to be work, filling out a wish list uh, via your PDs that's, uh, that's, uh, that's been given by Lieutenant Commander Chamberlain, and they'll be working closely with, 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 uh, with him to finally detail you to an opportunity if you're not selected either for GME or, or for one of these other communities. So in the end, I'm going to, I'm going to just reinforce it. The communication is, is essential, not only uh, to your specialty leaders, but again, to the detailer of, of whatever specialty that you're currently in. Slide, please. And these, uh, you know, just some questions. These are the points of contact for the entire medical core detailing team at PERS, and uh, and look forward to your questions. That's all I have, Captain Barrett. All right. Uh, thank you, Captain Smith, for that overview and information on OMO opportunities and um, assignments. Um, at this time, I'd like to just give an opportunity for the operational operational special leaders that we have on the line um, to add any additional comments, if any. Um, I'll start off first by uh, going to our undersea medicine specialty community uh, leader, um, Captain Mucheroni. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, nothing to add. Uh, standing by for questions. All right. Thank you. Um, let's go to our Fleet Marine Forces Commander um, Buckland Coffee. Good afternoon. A lot of the goals for the FNF that are more appropriate for those who are board eligible or board certified may be represented in the NSS. So I've already received some questions about applying for NSS and OMO concurrently. I would say reach out to me directly to have that conversation and copy Lieutenant Commander Chamberlain, because there are certainly some that are probably too senior to apply for anything other than just than NSS without hurting their careers. And there are some that would probably benefit from the application for both. So that's a conversation that I've already started with a few people. But other than that, I have nothing to add. Thank you. All right, thank you for those comments. Um, I'll turn to um, Captain Leonard from Surface Medicine. Hey, thanks. Um, uh, two points that I would uh, clarify. Um, one is that um, was mentioned about the selection uh, being published at the end of the year. And um, just a, a little caveat, if uh, we need further explanation, we can do so. That selection is not equal to slating. And so, um, the surface billets, there's a, a fairly small number compared to, to other communities. And so um, so being selected for surface a surface billet does not necessarily equate to assignment to a surface billet. And then my second point would be for the, the list that have been put out um, already with regard to uh, surface platforms, uh, just a, a reminder that the um, the SMO, the senior medical officer billets on the large decks, the LHDs and LHAs are, are detailed under the um, non-specialty specific uh, pathway. And so the OMO billets that are listed uh, for, for surface um, are the are not the SMO billets. So they're the what used to be the GMO billets. But um, I mean, the good news is there to be another physician there to, to help you and back you up. Want to clarify that. Thank you. OK, thank you for those comments and and then flying. Finally, um, our flight community, uh, Captain Krause, or um, I don't I, I don't see him in the chat, but if we have somebody, a designee on his behalf that wants to speak up, I'll give you a few seconds. OK, uh, hearing none. Uh, that concludes um, all of the content that we wanted to present today. Um, we will use the remaining time to, to do our best to answer any questions that you have. So I open it up to questions. Uh, if you want to just unmute your mic and pipe up, uh, we're happy to entertain those. Alternatively, uh, we'll be monitoring the um, chat for any questions that you'd like to type out.
Hey, hey, Captain Barrett, this is this is Wayne. Hey, uh, while you're waiting for any questions, I could you gotta take a minute to uh, to follow up on some of the points that uh, both Captain Buckland Coffee, uh, Commander Buckland Coffee, and Com uh, Captain Leonard mentioned. Sure, please. Yeah, so no, those great points by uh, the FMF and the surface uh, uh, specialty leader. So, in regards to OMO versus NSS, so um, we just pushed out the NSS uh, materials uh, just actually last week via the Captain Barrett's. Uh, you know, core chiefs update. So that's why I mentioned that from a practical perspective from detailing, we're, we're, we're talking about OMO billets being those that have historically been filled by non-residency trained physicians, i.e. junior billets, entry level. That's why we, we consider this a good opportunity for people that have not had operational experience in the past. Um, um, uh, because they could set you up for more senior positions. The, the, the non-specialty specific um, uh, list is truly more senior. Usually most, there's very few O4s. Usually it's O5, O6 level senior operational, but also administrative research type positions uh, that require a lot of extensive, you know, previous background knowledge to, to, to enter. So, so that that's that's where the difference lies. Uh, the processes are slightly different, but I, I can envision people that are probably O5s that don't have previous operational experience um, that that would would want to maybe consider OMO. We just have to be very careful with that because there are rank issues here. OK, I'm not going to put an O5, O6 into, let's just say, a Marine Corps Infantry Battalion that normally has an O3 with an O5 commander. That just would not work. So for those senior officers, uh, that don't have previous operational experience that would be more more likely served on the NSS process. Uh, we're just going to have to have a, a good discussion uh, with the operational specialty leaders, your community specialty leaders, and your detailer to find out what the best solution is going forward. So that there, uh, that's the difference between those two those two lists. And, and to Captain Leonard's point, great point, Mark. Uh, uh, this happens. People, uh, you're you're going to apply for things, and you may not, and you may get selected. You may be screened positively for this. This happens in all of our slating processes, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that position. And that's again where the detailers have to be the final adjudicators because there are so many factors. A perfect example would be a, 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 someone coming, a junior anesthesiologist, for instance, that wants to d do a an OMO billet with the Marine Corps because he or she never had that opportunity. And that's that's totally appropriate. However, as Captain Barrett had mentioned, we have coded anesthesia billets with the FMF um, uh, that that we have to fill. And so, depending on manning and depending on you know the overall force structure and inventory, we in the PERS may have to make that decision not to allow you to go into one of these infantry battalions that that, that the OMO billet list is from, and and, and detail you into something else uh, uh, that 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 we have to put you into. For instance, a, a coded billet in your specialty. So th that's the challenge that we have to navigate at PERS, and that's why, to Captain Leonard's point, that it's important to realize that uh, despite your application, despite where you're screened, and that, that that in the end we've got to make some some choices that 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 may not always match up to what your 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 interest list was. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, that's all I have, Captain Barrett. Any other pending? Any other questions? Um, there was a question in the chat from Lieutenant Powers um, about CB billets and if they're going to be um, within their own OMO application or in their own billets. Um, and um, if someone can comment on that for the group. The uh, I think uh, Commander Chamberlain commented in the chat, but basically the CB billets are, uh, for all practical purposes, handled like surface billets. So they'll be listed under the under the surface community. Thank you, sir. I I know it's in the chat, but because we're recording this, and uh, for for people who are going to watch this later, I wanted to make sure that we verbalize it since the chat is not going to be um, available for them. Oh, good point. Did I uh, did I answer it sufficiently? Then do you think? Yes, sir. Yes. Perfect. Any other questions from the group? Now's a, a great time to you have uh, the ear of multiple detailers, your operational specialty leaders, uh, everyone. So uh, please take this time to answer any questions about operational communities that you have. Um, uh, either just come off mic or if you want to just type your question in, uh, we can read it for everyone.
we have another question in the chat. Um, the uh, will this application uh, cycle for this fiscal year be considered for future fiscal years? And I think uh, that question is kind of similar how they do it for command applications and command screening that once you're screened, does that mean that you can kind of stay screened for the future? Does someone want to comment on that? Hey, Jen, this is uh, Captain Barrett from the Court Chief's Office. So the way I'd answer that question is I'd say that this is an annual cycle and that we would encourage you to apply in each application cycle. Um, it's a great question as, as this is only our second iteration of the process, but the intent is, is that you would um, that you would apply each time uh, if that if it's a new application to a community community and that you have not done a tour in that community. Over. Yeah, and this is Captain Smith, and I would concur with Captain Barrett. There's really no bank that exists uh, for for OMO um, like they that like you would have for command screening or milestone screening. Uh, you know, you now obviously the application if you've done it one year is going to be abbreviated, but for the most part, it, it, it is an annual cycle that has to be kind of repeated in in sequence. So I would I would just concur with Captain Barrett. This is Commander Buffalo Coffee. Uh, I'm going to just agree with everyone and uh, make sure that you know that I received 160 different applications last year and have actually had to update the screening process based on things that we saw with our new with our new evaluation because the we tried to combine the UMO and the GME score sheet and found that that really wasn't terribly useful for the Marine Corps. So over the next couple of years, I anticipate that we'll be tweaking our score sheet every year. So um, being able to go back and rescore with a, a new score sheet and the vast number of applicants is just not possible to carry them forward year to year. Over. Excellent. Thank you all for those responses. Any other questions from the group? Um, I will also say that um, I know for the last couple of years, um, operational experience uh, and leadership experience, uh, especially in the Indo-PACOM region, has been named specifically on um, promotion board precepts and convening orders and everything. So um, it is definitely a great uh, opportunity for those who did not do a GMO um, tour, <clears throat> a GMO tour to get into the operational communities. I think we can keep the line open. Let's just do like two more minutes and no one has any other questions, then we can uh, finish early. But uh, I would definitely recommend for everyone on the line, please take this opportunity. If there's ever a question that you have or if someone once uh, asked you a question and you didn't have the answer and, and you think that it would be beneficial for the group. Uh, remember, other people will be watching this. Last year we had um, a a lot of people that couldn't make it uh, watched it afterwards and uh, they found it really helpful. So if you have a question that you think would be beneficial for others, even if you think you might know the answer, please feel free to ask it. And Commander and Clowey, uh, Ms. Ken Barrett, I would chime in just again to reiterate that we've been recording this session. We're going to um, add the session to our um, Core Chief um, SharePoint site. We'll push it out via social media. We'll also include the slide decks that were presented today so you can reference. They have web links on them. They have contact information from um, our detailers as well as our operational specialty leaders. And so all of that information all the information for day, from today can be found on our SharePoint site. Uh, yes, definitely. And the link will be um, on our SharePoint site and uh, it'll link you to our YouTube channel. And so you can always go back and watch um, some of our other videos, other our other session, last, last year's session. Um, but I will say that things have changed a little bit in the sense of um, more experience, more knowledge um, in the process this year. And so, uh, please definitely go on our SharePoint. We have lots and lots of information that, that we post there.
Yeah, and this is Com Captain Smith. So I, uh, to reiterate not only what Commander Inkalawi, but Captain Barrett said, this is our second year doing this. There were a lot of lessons learned last year, uh, a lot of painful lessons, and it came down to communication and coordination. And that's why I think it's important for anyone considering these types of positions that that that, that point of contact uh, information is essential. The, 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 the cognizant operational specialty leader, your community specialty leader, and then the detailer. OK, that, that, those are the three people that you should be completely integrated with and, 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 and advertising and communicating your intent and, and to come up with the best solution uh, going forward. So please just keep those points of contact close because that's really where the, the so the rubber meets the road in the end and how the assignment happens. So just keep that in mind. Thank you very much. And I also think that you can reach out to the special leaders if you're not sure if you want to apply or not, or if you don't know what the best thing to do for your career at this time, because uh, maybe you're a you know mid-level or more senior 04 or um, an 05 or you know a senior 03 and you, you're worried about kind of promotion and timing and everything like that. Um, you can always just reach out to the, uh, the um, operational specialty leaders for questions and to have a discussion. Um, they are incredibly approachable and uh, I'm happy to, to help uh, in any way. So please feel free to reach out. Um, it, are there any other questions from the group or comments at all? Um, I'll do one last kind of uh, alibi save rounds and uh, after that we'll be good. All right, uh, not hearing anything or seeing anything in the chat. This will end our uh, discussion of the OMO process and applications. Please, as we said, um, go to SharePoint and get more information. Reach out if you have any questions and thank you all for joining today. I'm going to stop the recording now.